Okay, folks, thank you for joining us on this, uh, this interview today. Listen, of course, I'm Pastor Carl Gallops uh, here on the Gulf Coast in the United States, the pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church, uh, seated right over, see, I got to point that way, everything's backwards here on the software, is my dear friend and ministry partner, uh, Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt. Now, I say ministry partner. We both have separate ministries. He doesn't tell me what to do. I don't tell him what to do, but we've been ministering together in the love of Jesus for years now, and we've written a book together called The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and the Identity of Messiah. As a matter of fact, here it is. Uh, we wrote this book together. It's gone all over the world. God's people have just been blessed by it. Zev is, is able to use this to take Orthodox Jews, even Orthodox rabbis, to the Word of God and from the Word of God that he's been able to lead them to the Lord. But this book has opened the door to get them into the Word. And so maybe he can tell you about that sometime. But anyway, I want you to get this book. We've written this together, published by Defender Publishers, major publishing company here in the United States. Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt. So you can find him at messiahofisraelministries.com.org.net. Anything you want to put in there, Messiah of Israel Ministries. So Messianic Rabbi Zev Peratt, most of the viewers of this know you, but for those that don't, I'm just going to tell them very quickly. Uh, he was born and raised into a rabbinical family in Israel and Tel Aviv. He lives now and ministers, uh, but uh, his father was a rabbi, his grandfather was a rabbi, his great-grandfather was a rabbi. Um, uh, he's, his whole family has been deeply connect, connected to the Orthodox rabbinical movement. On his mother's side, there are people in, in her family that are, are, that are all a part of the, uh, the Israeli government. Zev has been in the Israeli military. He's deeply connected to folks that are still there and high-ranking officials. So he's got a lot of connections in the government, the military, and the rabbinic movement, as well as he is, of course, a believer in Yeshua HaMashiach. He is a messianic uh, rabbi, and so he has a lot of connections in the messianic community. He comes over to the United States a lot. We preach conferences and, and, and prophecy conferences, Bible conferences together. He's been in my pulpit. He's been in Jonathan Kahn's pulpit and his church. Uh, and he's got his own ministry. He does a lot of television and radio. So I just want you to know who he is in case you don't. All right, messianic rabbi Zev Peratt, my brother Zev. Listen, we're moving right into, we're in Passover week, moving right up to the resurrection, celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell folks your teaching on the, the, the true messianic biblical meanings of Passover and, and the Lord's Supper and how all that ties together and what it is we're getting ready to do. Thanks for being with us. Well, thanks for having me, Carl. Always an honor and a blessing to be here with you and be in ministry together with you. Actually, right now, we have just started Passover. If we look at the biblical calendar in Nisan 14, uh, Leviticus 23, verse 5, on the 14th day of the first month, that's now, this is the first month, is the Lord's Passover. And the Bible verse actually says in some translations, at twilight is the Lord's Passover, or some say in the evening, and it's quite confusing because if you read the next verse, it says, and you shall slay, slay the Passover lamb in the evening. How is it possible to slay the Passover lamb in the evening? Well, it doesn't say that, but it says, if it starts, if it says the Passover begins at twilight, what does that mean? But in Hebrew, it doesn't say that. In Hebrew, it says, on the 14th day of the first month between the evenings, is Passover. Now, what does that mean? Well, if the, the biblical calendar, today's evening, today's Nisan 14, sundown in Israel. It just started now. So this is the first evening. Do we celebrate Passover? Yes. Do we have the Passover meal now? No, because Jesus didn't go to the cross yet. The lambs weren't slain yet. That's tomorrow. And that's why it says in Hebrew, Ben Ha'aravim, between the evenings, meaning this evening today, and between tomorrow evening, you're to eat the Passover lamb. But tomorrow evening is already unleavened bread because the feast of Passover and unleavened bread are overlapping. They go hand in hand. But you eat the Passover in the evening tomorrow. That's why it says in Hebrew, between the evenings. But in English, it seems to, to think, you seem to think that tomorrow starts Passover. No, it starts today. Today is on the biblical calendar Passover. Now, Jesus is the Passover lamb. We know this, John 1, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
We know that in the Old Testament, it was a foreshadow of Yeshua, of Jesus. When they had, when they had to bring the Passover lamb and slay it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that is the exact same hour Jesus gave up his spirit. It is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the Bible records, the same time the high priest was slaying the Passover lamb, Jesus gave up his spirit because he is the lamb. Now, in the Old Testament, if you read it, you are to eat the Passover lamb in the evening. So people think that tomorrow evening we need to have a big meal with a lamb. Well, you could if you wanted to, but that's not what it means. We have to go back to the time of Jesus. Yeshua told his disciples, I desire to have a Passover meal with you. He didn't say the Passover meal. He said a Passover meal. Why? He couldn't have had the Passover meal. He's the Passover lamb. He didn't go to the cross yet. He was preparing his disciples. So it was a Passover meal, but it wasn't in Passover. Not, not as far as the time where they eat the lamb. It might have been this evening. It might have been yesterday evening. We don't exactly know. Most people think, and most scholars think it was this evening before he went to the cross. Could be. Makes sense. If you look tomorrow, when all of Israel is going to be celebrating this Passover Seder and eating a T-bone and eating a lamb, they're going back in the Old Testament. They don't understand that Jesus in the Lord's table, what did he do? He said, this is my body broken for you. You are to eat the Passover lamb between the evenings. That's why it's called the Lord's Passover. His body represents the lamb, the lamb that they've been slaying for thousands of years. Now is sitting with his disciples and telling you, I am the Passover. I am without leaven. This is my body broken for you. This is what it means to eat the Passover lamb. This is why the Bible says you must eat my flesh. You must drink my blood. It's, it's spiritual. That's what he was speaking about. So how, do we, how are we as, in, as believers in Yeshua and Jesus supposed to celebrate the Passover? Well, we're supposed to remember what he did for us on the cross. Our salvation began at that time, his resurrection. But as tomorrow evening we have a meal, we're supposed to take, we're supposed to break bread. We're supposed to take communion because that's the true Passover. We're supposed to break bread. This is my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup of the new covenant. That's the true Passover. That's how we're supposed to be celebrating Passover. Unfortunately, instead of not everybody, but a lot, a lot of people that love Israel uh, focus on what the rabbis teach. They have this plate and they're doing all the traditions that they're, you could do that if you wanted to, but that's not how Jesus celebrated Passover. Where does it say that Jesus took the plate out and he did all these traditions? It doesn't say that. It says that he is the Passover. I, I'm the Passover lamb. You have, for example, the four cups in the tradition. There's no four cups in the Bible. I know that there's Bible verses that they, that they can apply to these four cups, but the Bible verses have nothing to do with the four cups. There's one cup in the Bible, and that's Psalms 116, and that is the cup of salvation. in Hebrew. The word for salvation is Yeshua. It actually says the cup of Yeshua. Right. That's what it says. What's right. the cup of Yeshua? This is my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the blood of the new covenant. And he said, this is the cup of redemption. And then he says, I will not drink of this cup. Not again. Right. That's an inaccurate translation. He didn't drink the cup. He can't drink the cup. That would be like he's drinking his own blood. He wouldn't right. do that. Right. He said, no, I will not drink of this cup until, until when? Until the marriage supper. Until the new heavens, new earth. I will not eat of this. Until when? Until the marriage supper. This is all prophetic. And this is the true meaning of Passover. There is another cup in the Bible, but it's not the cup of salvation. It's not the cup of Passover. The Bible speaks about not to, to take partake of the cup of demons. Yes. The, 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 you, can't, you can't serve two masters. Either you take Yeshua's cup or you take the devil's cup. The Bible says that it's in the word of God. A lot of people don't know this. So in a way, without even knowing it, I'm not saying people are doing it deliberately. A lot of people love Israel, love the Lord, want to celebrate. If you're celebrating more than one cup, you're actually partaking without even knowing it with the cup of the devil. It's demonic. Because Jesus, these are hard, hard words to say, and it's not, a po it's not popular from a guy from Israel saying this, but I have to preach the truth. Because it's more about Jesus than it is about us. It's not about us. It's all about right, him. Right. And Let, therefore, the focus has, has to be on Jesus. So there's right. one cup in the Bible. 
Uh, you want to have a, a big meal, a Seder, that's fine. But remember that the Bible says, Paul spoke about this in Romans 11, 11, we are to provoke the Jews to jealousy. My question is, if we're teaching them that there's four cups, exactly what they're doing, and we're celebrating Passover like them, how are they going to be partakers yes. of the cup of salvation? They yes. can't. Yes. So, so, a lot of, so it's very, very important to bring that out. Yeah. Listen, I know you've got a lot more to say. I just want to interject. Thank you for this teaching. And, and so, so isn't it true that, that the Passover Seder, as it is partaken of now by Orthodox Jewish people, not even Orthodox Jewish people, just Jewish people who want to celebrate Passover, and it goes back for thousands of years that these tra traditions were invented by the rabbis. They're, it's not in the scripture. Here's what you do. You take this cup, then this cup, then this cup, then this cup, and you break the bread here, and you eat the lamb here, and you eat the bitter herbs here, and you tell the stories here, and you read this scripture, and this scripture, and this scripture. All of that, some of it is fine to read the scriptures, to remember what happened in the wilderness, of course, but there's nowhere in the Bible that prescribes the exact order and all of these different elements that are a part of the Orthodox ritual today. And what you're saying is if you stick by the scriptures, there are no, no four cups that are prescribed. Okay, and I know you and I are not making a huge deal of this, but on the other hand, it is important. There is one cup, Psalm 116, and, and the psalmist is saying, so what shall I do to honor the Lord? I will drink of the cup of salvation. Now, as you said, that word salvation is English, but if you sp if speak it in Hebrew, what shall I do to honor the Lord? I will drink of the cup of Yeshua is what it says, because Yeshua means salvation. And when you get to the New Testament, Jesus celebrates Passover with one cup. This cup is the cup of the covenant that I am making with you. Jeremiah 31, 31, probably. Go ahead. Now, a lot of people think, wait a minute, if you read the, the New Testament, he, there's another cup there, because it says, likewise, after supper, or I'm paraphrasing, or after dinner, he took another cup. So it seems to think that he had the cup and then he took another cup. Not if you look at the Hebrew, not if you understand what, we, what we're talking about. What is the Passover meal? The Passover meal is his body. So he breaks the bread and he says, this is my body broken for you. That's the meal. We can agree that's the meal? Yes. Likewise, after the meal, after he broke the bread, he took the cup. So it's not another cup after the meal. It's he is the meal. He is the Passover lamb. And after he did that, he took the cup. If you read it in English, it seems to, you seem to think there's another cup. But right. if you understand that he's the Passover lamb and he's the one that you're eating, he didn't take another cup. It, it's not after dinner. Well, it is after dinner prophetically because he's the dinner. You must eat of my flesh if you want to be a partaker of the kingdom. And I'm paraphrasing. And this is why it's so important not to follow the rabbis. Because we miss all these things because we're too much locked in tradition. And I understand Passover is a huge thing and you want to have a huge meal. Have a huge meal. It's great. I'm sure that when Yeshua sat down with his disciples and he broke bread with them, that wasn't the only meal. They had a you know, physical meal. I'm sure they had meat. I'm sure they had a cap there. I'm sure they had a lot of things. But the focus of the meal was this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And I spoke about this in previous programs. The word remembrance there is the word zachal which also means a dress rehearsal. That's why Jesus wants us to do it over and over again to prepare us for his second coming as the bride of Yeshua, the Messiah. So this is very important to bring out. Now, how do you celebrate Passover? I get tons of emails. Tell us how to celebrate Passover. Well, I just did. Have a, a great meal. Family members with your church, with your congregation, wherever, you, wherever God has positioned you to be. Break bread. It's very important. Break bread. Have the Lord's table. Remember what he did for you. This is your salvation. No Passover lamb, no salvation. Remember that. And that's the meal that you're supposed to have. All the other things, the tradition, that's fine if you want to use it as an evangelistic tool. If you do what we just said right now, that is the most prophetic evangelistic tool you could ever use. In the book of, uh, I think it's Mark 7, 13, Jesus speaks about it. He says, why do you make void the word of God for your own tradition? He says it. Jesus 
is God. And Jesus tells us, don't do the tradition of man. Why do you do that? How can you preach the gospel if you're doing all these traditions? And I, I get it. I could look, I'm, a, I'm in Israel. I mean, we spoke about this offline. If I was to go right now online and to send out an email and to send out a YouTube video that I'm going to do a big Seder uh, the way the rabbis do it here in Israel, I would get a million views. But I prefer to get 100 views for the truth and not a million uh, views to mislead people. Right. It's time we understand what the Bible says. Right. No, that's good, Zev. Thank you so much for explaining this. It's all about Jesus. It always has been, even when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt and they were instructed, take a lamb, a young male lamb, perfect, unblemished, S choose him on the 10th, sacrifice him on the 14th, take a hyssop branch. And by the way, it was a hyssop branch that was used to lift the sponge to Jesus' mouth. Take the hyssop branch, dip it in the blood of the lamb, put it on the doorpost above the, 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 the above and, and on the doorpost beside. And, and it's in the shape of the cross. You're putting the blood in the shape of the cross over the door. And whoever comes through that door, Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way. Whoever comes through that door under that blood, which happens to be in the shape of the cross and comes into that house in my father's house are many mansions. And you can only get there through me. Jesus said, then they are under the covering of God and God's wrath will pass over them. And that's how the children of Israel, and then not just uh, Israelis, not just uh, Jews, not just Hebrews, it's the Bible says, um, and, and many others from many other nations came out with them. Why? Because the, the, the Jews had been t witnessing to their neighbors because they had been under all these plagues. And they said, if you want to get saved, if you want to get saved, if you want to get saved, you've got to get under the blood. And, and some believed and they came under the blood and they came out with the Jews under protection. So I'm thinking about the world that we're living in right now. And I'm thinking about, um, I'm just dealing with some pop-ups that are coming on the screen. And, and I'm thinking, uh, Zev, about, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, a uh, uh, fear that's sweeping the world. And now we can say, look, don't you see this is at least a foreshadowing of what's to come? The plagues, the pestilence, the outpouring of God's wrath. Why not get under the blood now? We're like the ancient Israelites, aren't we? We're saying to the world, come join us, get under the blood so that God's wrath, when it comes, it will pass over you. So boy, this is an, an amazing Passover to celebrate. This is an amazing time of, of, of in human history. And here we are getting ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and Passover. And almost all the churches and synagogues around the world are shut down because of this COVID panic. And a lot of it under government orders. Go ahead. They're shut down, but you know, you can't shut down the word of God. That's right. Just like in a time when you beautifully, as you brilliantly explained, but the blood and the lintels of the doorpost, which is a foreshadow of the Passover land and a beautiful picture of the one new man, as you just uh, explained that anybody who would put the blood on the lintels of the doorpost of the house shall be saved, whether they're Jew, whether they're Egyptian, whether from the nations, the blood is for everyone. The Passover lamb is for everyone. And, and that was the foreshadow from the beginning. But God is also calling everybody that has not called on Jesus. And even those that are the ones that are, have called on Jesus but need to be strengthened a little bit. Just like he parted the Red Sea and did something supernatural, he's going to part the Red Sea spiritually in this COVID-19 virus, and the believers are going to walk right through it, but they Amen. have to walk in faith. Amen. They have to walk in his provision. They have Amen. to walk in his, in his word. And I think that's the message right now. I'm not taking the COVID-19 lightly. It's deadly. It's dangerous. It's demonic. Anything, when, when you're dealing with something demonic, it's dangerous. Yes. You can't yes. say demonic. But Ephesians 6, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities in, the, in, in, in different realms. And I'm paraphrasing. We need to understand that uh, I think uh, Netanyahu said it, Benjamin Netanyahu, and I think I'm, I'm almost sure that uh, uh, President Donald Trump said it, that it's an invisible enemy. And he's right. It yeah. is an invisible enemy because we're in, in Ephesians 6 right now. We need to recognize that. And the only way to overcome this invisible enemy is by the blood of the lamb. Absolutely. Put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of your heart. That's right. That's good.
That's good. What a great word. Listen, we're going to have to conclude this particular interview, but I think it's, this is an appropriate place to conclude it. Uh, maybe you could speak a word of blessing over the people, and then we will close this down. But thank you for joining us today live from Tel Aviv. If, you're, if we're going through difficult times, and I know we're always going through difficult times because we're, as we get closer to the second coming of Jesus, Yeshua, we need to understand that things like this are going to happen. Other things are going to happen. We live in a fallen world. It's not going to get better. It's only going to get better when Jesus returns. It might get better temporary, but something else will happen. Stick with the word of God. Stick in prayer. God will protect you. God is close to his word. He's always been close to his word. And I just want to read Psalms 34 verses 18 and 19. I think it's a beautiful passage. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles. You're going to have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. That's and good. that's a promise from the word of God. That's good. That's good. Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat. You can uh, visit him at messiahofisraelministries.com. Uh, you can be a part of his ministry in so many different ways. Sign up to get his newsletter and, uh, and just stay tuned to all of his channels and my channels because we're always ministering together. Uh, before the COVID panic hit, uh, we were going back and forth to Israel and the United States together, doing a lot of television and radio and, uh, and conferences and preaching. But that'll all resume sometime soon, brother, if it's the Lord's will. Bottom line is we're in very prophetic days and we're going to do whatever we have to do, but we're not shutting down the preaching and teaching and speaking of the gospel. Thank you, Zev. Did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I was just thinking about this quarantine stuff. People are quarantined here. They're quarantined there. Same thing here in Israel. We need to understand something. The devil has kept people in quarantine for thousands of years. Thousands of years, yeah. Thousands of years. That's good. It's yeah. time to get freed from the blood of Jesus. That's right. Come out, set the captives free under the blood of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for listening today. We really, really appreciate it. It's been good to have you with us. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have more uh, videos and interviews like this. And may the Lord bless you and keep you always. Thank you. doesn't know.